We have seen first order conditions using Lagrangian method. Let's look at how do we check whether the points which you have calculated using Lagrangian technique in first order condition, those critical points, uh, they are indeed maxima or minima. Suppose you have n variable function, which is function f, which is the function, it is an nth dimensional vector. So it is f, which, which depends on x1 through xn. Okay, so, and there is one constraint. There is one constraint, which is g x1 through xn equals to b. Okay, so what you do is that you form the bordered Hessian. Okay bordered Hessian matrix of Lagrangian function is where the bordered elements they are the first order partial derivatives of the constraint G. So how do you do this? So you form the bordered Hessian matrix you write 0, G1, G2 and so on to Gn, G1, G2 Gn. So all of these are the first order derivatives, first order partial derivatives of the constraint function. Okay, this is G. Okay, which it it could be written as uh, b minus g x1 through xn equal to zero. So in case if you want to find out uh, what is the derivative del g by del x1, this is G1 del g by del x2 it is g2 and so on so this is this is the way you border this matrix and the other elements are and the remaining elements they are the second order partial derivatives of the lagrangian function okay so lagrangian function is l what you do is this is l11 l12 and so on to l1n L21, L22, and so on to L2n, Ln1, Ln2, and so on to Lnn. So this is the matrix which you have, which is called the bordered Hessian. Okay, and how do you find out these L11? You'll you will uh, write the Lagrangian function. Lagrangian function is L, which is f x1 through xn plus lambda b minus g, which again is a function from x1 through xn. Okay, so you'll find del L by del f1, uh, del L by del x1, I'm sorry. You'll find del L by del x2 and so on to del L by del xn. Okay, L11 would be del 2L by del x12. L12 would be del 2L by del x1 x2. Del L1n would be del 2L del x1 del xn. Okay, so on to Similarly, ln1 would be del 2l del xn del x1 and so on to del 2l del xn2 and so on. So what you do is that uh, that you, you calculate all of these second partial derivatives and uh, second order partial derivatives and you and you put them into this matrix and what you get is the bordered Hessian. Now, the sufficient condition for local, and, and note that, that all of these partial derivatives, all of these partial derivatives, they are calculated at the critical points, okay, which you have calculated from the first order condition, that is x1 star, x2 star, and so on to xn star, and lambda star. Okay, these are the critical points which you have calculated from the first order conditions and then you will 
put them, you'll, you'll be calculating these, these, all of these elements of this matrix at these points, okay, at the critical points. Now, the important point is that sufficient condition, sufficient condition for local maxes that H1B is less than 0, H2B, B just denote the bordered Hessian matrix and so on. So, so these, these, these are the principal leading minors <clears throat> and they are alternating in signs. And for local min, it would be H1B less than 0, H2B less than 0 and so on. Now, I'll give you one example here, okay. Example is that supposedly if the objective function is xy and uh, the constraint is x plus y is equal to 5, we will calculate uh, first of all the critical points using first order conditions and then we'll check the second order conditions. So the Lagrange is xy plus lambda 5 minus x minus y. So how do you find out the first order partial derivatives of L with respect to x is del L by del x is y minus lambda equal to 0. Del L by del y is x minus lambda equal to 0 and del L by del lambda is 5 minus x minus y equal to 0. So from first and two what you can write is y is equal to lambda and x is equal to lambda. So this would imply that y is equal to x. You can substitute y equal to x into the last equation which will become 5 minus x minus in place of y you can write x because y is equal to x is equal to 0. So 5 is equal to 2x and x is equal to 2.5 but since y is equal to x so y is also equal to 2.5 so we'll write these are star values indicating that these are the critical points so what is the value for lambda from the first equation y is equal to lambda so 2.5 also is equal to lambda star now what do we have to do is that we have to check the second order conditions okay so for second order condition we have to we have to calculate the bordered hessian matrix so bordered Hessian matrix would be, you will border it with the first order partial derivative of constraint gx, gy, gx, gy, okay. So there are two, two variables in the constraint. You have the constraint, what is the constraint? x plus y equals to 5, x plus y equals to 5. This is the constraint which you have. So how many partial derivatives you'll find out? Two partial derivatives. And then the other second order partial derivatives of the Lagrangian function would be Lxx, Lxy, Lyx, Lyy. Okay, so this is the matrix which you will have to calculate. Okay, now let's calculate this, zero. What is the value for gx? That is, this is g. Okay, what is the value for gx? Del g by del x is 1. What is the value for del g by del y in this case? 1. This will be again 1 and 1. Okay, lxx. This is lx, the first order partial derivative. This is ly. So what is, so what is lxx? You have to differentiate this function with respect to x which is equal to 0. What is LXY? 1. Then this is LY equals to X minus lambda. What is LYX? 1. And what is LYY? There is no Y in this, so it is 0. Okay. So this is the bordered Hessian matrix. So you'll calculate 
you'll calculate the principal uh, minors. One is H1B is 0, 1, 1, 0. So that is 0 minus 1, which is equal to minus 1, which is less than 0. And H2B is this entire determinant. Okay, so that would be expanding it along the first row. So it is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 1 is 1, 1, 1, 0, and plus 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so this is 0, this is minus 0, minus 1, plus 1, 1, minus 0. So that would be plus 1, plus 1, which is equal to 2. So this is greater than 0. So what do you have is that H1B is less than 0 and H2B is greater than 0. So you have calculated two principal minors of this bordered Hessian matrix and they are alternating in signs starting from the negative. So this indeed is a point of maxima. Now one thing you have to understand is that why why can't we use the simple unconstrained optimization problem the 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 way we check in uh, in the unconstrained problem the second order conditions uh, why can't we use that here because i'll just give you an example there um, supposedly if there are in the objective function the function is of n variables and there are m constraints okay so there are m constraints these these g's they are gj so what do you do is that the bordered hessian in this case it would be n plus m cross n plus m matrix which will look like something like this and and remember this that uh, this will look like something like this that is L lambda 1 lambda 1 L lambda 1 lambda 2 and so on to L lambda 1 lambda M L lambda 1 X1 L lambda 1 XM similarly L lambda 2 lambda 1 L lambda 2 lambda 2 L lambda 2 lambda m, L lambda 2 x1, and so on to L lambda 2 xm, xn, I'm so sorry, these are xn, okay, and so on to L xn lambda 1, L xn lambda 2, L xn, and so on to lambda m. LXN X1 and so on to LXN XN. So this would be the bordered Hessian of this matrix more generally. But point is that all of these elements, see lambda is coming only once in the Lagrange multiplier. Okay, so since it is coming only once, so its second partial derivative is going to be zero. So all of these would be equal to zero all of these so because of this and hessian hessian is not concerned with how you are ordering these uh, uh, how how you are ordering these variables okay so in case if these all of them are equal to zero initially then all the principal minors initially would be equal to zero and you can't find out whether these are indeed maxima or minima because in case if you find out that even h1 is zero h2 is zero h3 is 0 and so on all of them are equal to 0 then how can you say that whether these are minima or maxima okay so in order to get away with that problem you border it the way we have discussed here okay so this is the this is the second order conditions how 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 you calculate how you compute second order condition in lagrangian technique